Welcome back to the channel everyone and if you're new welcome if I sound kind of congested I have a little cold so I was out here doing a little work in my oxygen filled greenhouse just doing a little greenhouse therapy here so I got a new project I was working on and the sun is not cooperating with me we have barely any sunlight it's about 10 o'clock in the morning sitting darn near 60 degrees in here I shed my coat already I was sweating because I got all these polys up and I'm gonna talk about all that I worked some soil and I planted a bunch of stuff over the last week or two and I got sprouts come and I'm planting even more stuff and harvesting food in December it's early December early winter I guess but we're still getting good temp our Jean Payne compost heating system is working wonders for us and allowing us to keep good temperatures overnight in the greenhouse so as I'm waiting for my methane to start building and to start collecting methane I've been kind of experimenting with other heating ideas also just using passive heat from the Sun so I got myself a nice soybean barrel and soybean oil on top here I got to get it cleaned off and rinsed out I'm gonna get this cleaned up and possibly use it as a thermal heat sink we've got our John Payne compost heating water and that's flowing through the entire greenhouse here through all of our beds now I was thinking down on the end of this loop down at the end here if I could possibly sever my hose and then I have all these room for activities back here and I have a bunch of extra poly so I could possibly incorporate that large barrel and bury it possibly insulate it so I'm not taking a whole lot of light away I'm not taking all the light shed away and creating shade I'd like to just be able to use that drum right in this area to have another source of heat this water here is going to be an amazing thermal heat sink for us we've got our little pump you can kind of see it jumping around here you can see the bubble kind of sloshing back and forth we have no sunlight working with us today as soon as I set this up and got everything plugged in we had a little bit of sunlight and I went to grab the camera and the clouds rolled in and just covered up the Sun with a thick heavy cloud cover so we don't have enough activity to fully fill this up it'll drip every once in a while but I've got 50 feet of copper hose in this I had an old recycled window I used for this here so I basically used some insulation on the back here you can see my insulation I spray painted that sealed it all up real nice and tight cleaned my window very well on the inside and then sealed all this up these coils seem to be working well I had a little bit of water flow with the little bit of sunlight I had so I should be able to build some really good temperatures inside this box here there is about a two inch gap of air that is dead sealed so all of that black heat sinking and then the combination of the insulation on the back of it we can hopefully get some really really good temperatures and sink a lot of heat into this large tank of water and that's basically the winter game if you're growing in a cold climate we're in zone 5a 4b we see some pretty cold temperatures in the winter time so being able to keep this water thawed and warm is amazing to us and if we can just use free energy from the Sun we got a little solar panel running this little pump here and I I just ran the cord out my window so we're not really creating any holes or damage I just ran it out the crack in the window now I'm hoping by the end of this video I have a little bit of sunlight and I can show everybody the process of this flowing and it's gonna be cool to take some data temperatures because I got a lot of light that comes through this side of the greenhouse so we've got a little bit of Sun popping through hopefully we can get a little bit yep just a little shot of water little espresso there but it's forcefully blowing that water through so it's kind of surging still because we don't have full solar activity but with a nice sunny day we will be able to crank some water through there and having 50 feet of copper it's getting a little water flow there and with 50 feet of copper we should have enough travel through the copper that it's touching enough that we can actually heat that water up pretty decently to the temperature of the inside of the box. I wish I had a sunny day to unveil this but it's going to be cool to take some temperatures and see the data as this starts to progress here. So I'd like to see how much heat I can store in this water during the day from the coldest point starting first thing in the morning till nighttime when this shuts off on its own. So if we can continue to get a flow like that there's no doubt in my mind we can't transfer a decent amount of water here and I may mess with the angles of this actual system so this is how I originally had this set up I had tilted it down just to get better water flow because we didn't have much so being able to flow 
that much water without having any solar activity once it starts flowing it has a vacuum draw and it will just continue cycling throughout the day so without any sun we can potentially flow that much water right there at full capacity when we have a nice sunny day we can flow probably about a gallon a minute through that little thing right there so that's our solar heater if we get any more sun i'll come down and check that out let's walk through the greenhouse here came through and just threw tons of material on i had a bunch of perlite a bunch of old bedding new bedding uh tons of tons of filler so i wanted to come through with nice light fluffy basically like dust very good moisture retention on this but we're not over smothering the plants and it forms a little bit of insulation being nice and fluffy there so you can see all these little kale i had sprouted all these kale up planted about four or five days ago you can see a little kale coming up all over throughout this little bed that tells me we've got good enough temps with our geothermal tunnel here to be sprouting colder hardy crops and to be able to grow them but let's keep going through the bed here we've got all of these beets tossed a bunch of matter in there too hopefully to give them a little bit more invigoration as we watered all this in heavily the other day i covered all this up and had planted seeds so we're trying to reinvigorate growth these didn't have the best amount of nutrients in this soil because we've grown here so many times we pushed four or five crops of radishes this summer out of this whole bed so being able to throw nutrients in there and on top nonetheless after i watered in so all of those will sit and they won't wash away so when we come and water the next time all those nutrients will wash into the roots and we don't have to worry about them being washed out washed down to our walkway because we've got our walkway divots here kind of acting like gutters for us so coming up to the top where our geothermal is at the top of this bed I guess I mean so we've got all of these rapini broccoli I had sprouted all those up in a different bed and transplanted all these in here and basically just watered them in and they look like they're doing very well so we've got some lettuce popping up more head and collards all this is looking very well so I've made my way down to this bed so I'm gonna replant a bunch more material this is kind of my workspace for the time being all of my rock and insulation and pots and plants just lots and lots of stuff always moving around in the greenhouse so i basically worked my way through the whole greenhouse planting everything up for winter here and i was kind of late on a few things but having a good start to all of these plants like this kale this is beautiful we're getting good harvest from that all of our perpetual shards and spinaches very good looking everything looks well i still got dill coming up from summer got a whole bunch of purple tat soys still seeing some bug bites but no bugs we've got all of our egyptian onions got some rosemaries in here for pest protection regular tat soys here we've got all these wild leeks or wild ramps here so i wanted to get a nice bed of those in planted a whole bunch more tat soy seed you can see them starting to sprout up so after those get up and developed i'll come through and basically dust all of this material in i want all these plants to have lots of nutrients because they're planted so close because i wanted them planted close for winter time i like to keep everything nice and well packed in even though we've got heat in here i still did the same thing and it's proving to work very well we do have a little bit of dieback on some of the lower leaves because all of these plants are competing for the same nutrients because their root systems are so close so let's check the temps on this side of the greenhouse sitting about 50 51 degrees or so and that is awesome i'm able to come out here and it's constant we always have at least 50 degrees in the greenhouse and we've got our double layer on really insulating all that heat in and our compost heat is really really proving to be beneficial so i know this wasn't the most entertaining video here because i kind of just did a walk through my system down there my little heating box my solar heating box didn't work the best because we don't have a whole lot of sunlight but it is going to work once we have some sun it is going to work i see decent flow here yeah that's not a bad water flow right there because with a little bit of sunlight shining directly on that i'm interested to see what kind of temps we get in that box i may drill a hole and stick a thermostat down in the top of this just so i can get a reading of the inside as opposed to just checking the temps coming in and going out so everybody stay tuned for a data collection analysis on this solar heater here i'm glad to see some decent water flow now we're going to be transferring a lot of heat into this thermal mass and even when it's not super sunny and we're flowing a little bit 
it like that the airspace in the greenhouse is warmer than this water this water is probably like 39 40 degrees the airspace is at least 50 or 60 so just having this in here this is going to heat up and transfer a little bit of heat without much solar activity I've got a few more spaces to plant some seed in and then I'm pretty well done planting seed for right now till everything starts to sprout and then I can under sow another layer of crop